We've heard about great kings like Karikala Chora, Raja Raja Chora, and many more. But don't forget, all of them had a strong royal background. Their fathers were kings and their grandfathers were kings as well. But was it possible for a common man from a small village to become a powerful ruler and also challenge the British? <laughs> this is the story of a forgotten warrior, Marudan Ayuga. Hello everyone, I'm Ungar Anban Hamid. Today we'll be looking at the forgotten warrior Marudan Ayagam. But before we get there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. In the mid 18th century, Marudan Ayagam, alias Muhammad Yusuf Khan, with his humble beginnings as a common man, rose to the position of the ruler of whole of South Tamil Nadu. After serving as the commander of the British army, he gained enormous power that he became a rival of the British in his later life. Such a glorious life was destined to have a tragic ending because of the treachery of his close associates. By the mid 18th century, the rule of the Nayakas ended and there was only one major power in Tamaragam, the Nawabs of Arkad and they were supported by their strong ally, the British East India Company. There were also a few minor powers, the Tanjavur Marathas, the Marawa Kingdom, and the rest of the land was ruled by many polygars. In 1725, in a small village called Panayur in Ramna district, a boy named Marudanayagam Pillai was born. He hailed from a poor family. Growing up as a mischievous kid, he ran away from home, got converted to Islam and became Muhammad Yusuf Khan. He then reached Pondicherry where he worked for a few years. There he became a friend of a young Frenchman called Mershan. Later in his life, this Frenchman was destined to be the cause of his tragic end. The story of Mardanaiga is not only a story of bravery but also an ill-fated story of treachery. But before we get there, let us see what an incredible growth this young man had. Yusuf Khan left Pondicherry and joined as a soldier in the Tanjavur Maratha army. Later, he moved to Nellur in today's Andhra Pradesh and joined the Arkat Nawab's army. Then he married a Portuguese Christian woman called Marsha. In addition to Tamil, he spoke English, French, Portuguese, and Urdu. Over the years, in the Nawab's army, he quickly rose up the ranks from being a tax collector to a sepoy to a havildar. Finally, he became a subedar or a captain of the Nawab's army. In 1751, the Nawab's Chanda Sahib and Walaja fought for the throne of Arkat. Chanda Sahib was supported by the French while Walaja was supported by the British. British forces under Robert Clive defeated Chanda Sahib and installed Walaja as the Nawab of Arkad. After the defeat of Chanda Sahib, his best soldiers moved into the British army and Subedar Yusuf Khan was one among them. Yusuf Khan started serving the British army working closely with Robert Clive. He soon became a master of military tactics. In 1755, in recognition of his service, Yusuf was awarded a gold medal by the British and the title Commander-in-Chief of the Sepoys, the highest title ever held by an Indian serving the British Army. Then on, he was respectfully called by everyone, Khan Sahib. After Walaja was installed as the Nawab, he had huge debts to pay back to the British. So he gave them rights to collect taxes on his behalf from the Madurai region. Khan Sahib was sent for the task and he came back victoriously. Later, when the French attacked the British fort St. George in Madras, Yusuf played a crucial role in the victory of the British. Later, in 1759, the British East India Company 
appointed him as the governor of Madurai and Tirunelveli districts which included the whole of South Tamil Nadu. During his rule, he repaired the Madurai fort, restored Meenakshiamman temple and helped agriculture thrive. The British themselves recognized that there were two great military geniuses that India had ever produced, one being Hyder Ali of Mysore and the other one being Yusuf Khan. It's very unfortunate that we have forgotten Yusuf Khan today. Now, back to the story, he became even more powerful. However, he engaged in a few controversial wars. During a series of wars, he defeated many of the Paligars or the Parleyakarars who rebelled against the Nawab and the British. He killed Aragamuttu Khan and after about three years of effort, he defeated the famous Puli Tebar. And then all the Paligars came under his control. Aragamuttu Khan and Puli Tebar. Today, both of these great Paligars are recognized as freedom fighters. So, is it right to celebrate Yusuf Khan who actually defeated them? Above all, is Yusuf Khan a freedom fighter? Don't arrive at an opinion yet because now there is a big twist in the story. Because of Yusuf Khan, the tax revenue for the Nawab and the British increased tremendously. With this, Yusuf Khan grew to be extremely powerful. But this growth was something that the Nawab was not happy about. The Nawab of Arkad was under the Nizam of Hyderabad and even he declared that Yusuf was the rightful legal governor. As Yusuf Khan's reputation grew, the Nawab became jealous and feared that he might overpower him someday. In the meantime, the British also heard rumors that Yusuf was raising a huge army against them. Then the Nawab and the British collectively decided to arrest him. Yusuf Khan rebelled against the Nawab and the British and started gathering a huge army from all over the country, which also included French troops. He broke off allegiance with them and declared himself as an independent ruler of Madurai and Tirunelveli. So now it becomes clear that he really was not supporting the British or the Nawab or whoever. Since the time he became the governor of Madurai, he wanted to become an independent ruler and he finally achieved that. Now, will the British go easy on a rebel? <laughs> they wanted to finish him off. Enraged at this, the British gathered an army and attacked the Madurai fort. But they retreated as they could not succeed. After a year, they came back again with a bigger army surrounding the fort. But this time, they cut off all the food and water supplies to the fort. Many people in Madurai starved but continued to hold on courageously. Even after many months of effort, the British could not succeed. They realized that Yusuf Khan cannot be defeated by force, so they resorted to treachery. They bribed his close associates who were inside the fort with them. His old friend from Pondicherry, the French commander Marshan, and his Diwan Srinivasa Rao. On a fateful day, while Yusuf Khan was offering his prayers at his palace, the conspirators bound him and secretly handed him over to the British. The next day, near the British army's camp at Sammatipuram near Madurai, Yusuf Khan was hanged to death, leaving his wife, his two-year-old son and his people in misery. And that was the end of the courageous soul and his magnificent life. The hardness of his character, his bravery and overall the story of this forgotten hero needs to be remembered forever.